Okay, well, welcome everyone. I'm gonna maybe start my video since there's so few of us. Um, we appreciate um, everyone who's here today. I don't know if I started my video or not. It looks like I did, but I can't see it. Yeah, we can see you. Okay, there we go. Thank you, now I can see myself. <laughs> So welcome, We're, um, welcome to the October community meeting. On behalf of the steering committee, we are so excited that you were able to join us today. Um, and it's probably gonna be a, a brief meeting since we have um, only a few people signed up and joining us today. So we'll, we'll keep it brief. Um, as usual, we're going to use Mentimeter to get some feedback. And you all probably know the drill. Um, so if, if you are, wanna participate on menti.com by entering the code 65738602, please do. And it's also in the chat if you want to click on that. And so for our first question, we always like to know where everyone is joining us from. Oh, and I did I forget to do the agenda? I did, I skipped the agenda. So, so today's agenda, uh, we're gonna have an operations update. We're also gonna hear about the program update and a very brief strategic planning update. Okay, so now we can move to Menti and see where everybody is from. Wow, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that. I'm gonna need some help with that, with pronunciation on that. Oklahoma, Illinois, Florida. I'm still in Houston, Texas, where the weather, the humidity has dropped, so we might be able to continue living here. We'll see. Montreal, awesome. Okay, wonderful. So just a little icebreaker. What's your favorite season? Two votes for fall and it's fall, it's almost fall. I mean, unofficially it's fall, right? I, I know that um, some of us are super excited for all the things pumpkin spice. Looks like fall's winning, one winter. Okay, well, I'm gonna hand it over to Nicole Allen to give us an update on planning. All right, I can kick us off. So hi, everybody. Uh, here on behalf of the conference operations team, for those just joining us for the first time at one of these meetings, we always like to sort of start at the beginning, give a little bit of context of uh, the organizing structure for the Open Ed Conference for this year and last year. Um, so uh, I guess after uh, 2019, uh, four organizations stepped forward to support the organizing process for the Open Ed Conference going forward. Uh, the four organizations were OpenStax, Spark, the University System of Maryland, and the Colorado Department of Higher Ed. We are nearing the end of our two-year commitment, which uh, was to both organize the 2020 and 2021 conferences and also support a community-driven planning process that would help design the, the future of, of the conference going forward and we'll get a little bit more updates on the uh, planning process a little bit later on. And next up, I wanna make sure to acknowledge that uh, although the, the four organizations are the, um, uh, I guess, originally stepped forward to support the conference, the organizing of the conference has actually involved a wide number of community members participating in a lot of different ways uh, we have, uh, in addition to the steering committee, we have five standing committees that are focused on different aspects of the conference organizing process. We had about 100 people involved in the proposal review process. And we're also going to be putting out a call pretty soon for volunteers to help out with some of the work that needs to get done in the lead up to the conference and during the conference. So part of the way this is, the power of the way this is structured, it just involves a lot of different voices in making decisions. And we're really excited to build on the uh, um, model that 
uh, the conference used in 2020 to make this year even better. So I think I'm going to pass it off here to Aisha. Hello, everyone. Um, as a reminder, registration is open and the conference will be taking place from October 18th to the 22nd, and it's all virtual. The standard rates right now is $75, and for students, it is $25, but we have scholarships available for anyone who that cost might be a barrier to attendance. Um, and the link for registration and scholarships will be put into the chat. And scholarships are reviewed on a rolling basis and you should typically hear a response within a week or so if you were accepted or not. So I strongly encourage you all to apply if you need to do so and to spread the word. And then moving on to program updates. So all of the proposals have been submitted and accepted um, and we have over 200 live and pre-recorded sessions. And this was all a community driven re review process. So a lot of community members stepped up and helped. We had a lot of proposal reviewers. So thank you all for those who have helped. And there's a lot of different um, topics that range um, across the different topics we have. And they all relate back to open education, which, <laughs> which um, you can check out on the schedule, which is also put on the chat. So the schedule is now live. And you can see the layout for everything and even for the fun activities that we have planned. Um, and you can build your schedule if you're already registered, you can go ahead and start building your schedule. So that's all very exciting and we strongly encourage you to register early so you can get your schedule all planned out. Now I'll be passing it off to Haley for an update on the strategic planning process. Sure, thank you so much, Aisha and uh, everyone. Um, I just wanted to hop on and give a quick update um, about the strategic planning process um, as it's uh, going right now. So obviously, um, we did hold our public consultation on the strategic vision um, that was open for a little over three weeks and the period um, has officially closed as of last Friday. So I just wanted to say um, an enormous thank you to everyone who took the time to review it um, and add their perspectives to help make this better and just more reflective of um, you know, this community as a whole. So very, very grateful to um, everyone who was a part of that process and um, took the time to um, engage with us. Um, so our committee is going to be um, reviewing uh, some of the suggested changes um, and uh, sort of synthesizing that into a, a document soon. Um, so we don't have a um, specific deadline for that, but we're working to make sure that that's completed as soon as possible. Um, so we'll be uh, communicating with all of you through um, our regular channels, uh, be it our social media, on our website, through our mailing list, um, to let you know when that's available. And we'll certainly be sharing um, both the public, uh, the revised document, and sort of a summary of our changes um, with you soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, in terms of next steps, our committee is still um, formulating, you know, how exactly um, engagement with the community is going to look at the conference. Um, so they've been working sort of diligently to put this together um, and make sure that we have, um, you know, a, a very meaningful and substantive way for you to engage with us at the conference. Um, we're not quite ready to share that with you yet, um, but by our next meeting, um, we're very excited to be bringing you um, an update on what that's going to look like. So again, um, stay tuned. Um, we'll have more information for you soon. And in the meantime, just thank you so much for being part of this community and um, yeah, helping us to build something great together. Very appreciative. All right, Let's see if I can go to the next slide here. There we go. So we did just have a couple really quick questions that we wanted to ask today. Um, I know it's a little bit of a smaller um, group, which is totally cool. Um, but just as we sort of gear up to the conference, um, we're starting to uh, plan out some of the fun stuff, um, some of the engagement that's gonna be happening throughout the conference. So we're interested to hear um, what sort of events you would like to see um, at Open Ed 21. So aside from the conference programming itself, um, how can we 
facilitate some of those social connections and uh, ensure that everyone has a, a fun time as well as an educational time um, at the conference. Um, so seeing some interesting suggestions roll in language exchange, um, interested to hear more about that one. That sounds super interesting. Open mic. Uh, yoga. Yeah, we had a lot of um, people who were um, thrilled about the yoga that we did last year. Um, and it was definitely uh, super awesome. Karaoke, a classic. <laughs> I feel like virtual karaoke um, has come a long way <laughs> since the start of, start of the pandemic. Great. And then, yeah, a really great suggestion just in here now, facilitating networking, small tables and afterward um, combos. That was definitely something that we heard uh, last year is just being able to continue the conversation after session. So um, thank you for that. Circle of quiet dance contest. <laughs> love it. Um, yeah, cool. would love to hear more about some of those suggestions, but I think I'll move us along for now. Um, and our, just our last question is just sort of more open-ended. We just wanted to um, have an opportunity um, for you to share, you know, any other questions or feedback that you might have for us today. Um, happy to sort of take anything that might be lingering, uh, but of course you can always um, reach out to us as well. <clears throat> And oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to just say, um, we, we usually keep Minty open, right, for a little while after the meeting, so other people who weren't able to attend are able to give us suggestions. Is that, is that correct? I believe so, yeah. I think we can, um, we can definitely leave it open for at least a, a couple of days if people would like to um, submit some questions or feedback in general. Uh, yes, I think the question on everyone's minds, <laughs> um, again, sort of like we talked about earlier, we're really hoping to have a more substantive update by the next meeting. Um, it's something that we're working really hard to address and, you know, make sure we're making the best decisions possible for the growth of the conference. So, so do stay tuned. Yes, and just to add to that, speaking from the, uh, as I guess the, the the person from the organizations currently supporting the conference, like we're committed to, uh, you know, helping the conference uh, through that tr transition. So it's it's not like we just disappear. <laughs> um, you know, we'll. Uh, it, it's obviously up to the the committee to to make the decision on sort of how that process works and where things go. Uh, but, you know, we're very much committed to making sure that there's a smooth transi transition. Perfect. Thanks, Nicole. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Well, seeing no other questions, I think I'll just move us along. Um, and I think we've got another committee member who's going to wrap us up um, and take us, take us through. Ethan. <laughs> oh man well I, i'm happy to i'm happy to continue on the <laughs> on the presentation so just i guess for everyone um for everyone's information our next meeting uh, is going to be october 8th um at 1 p.m eastern so the same uh time slot as uh, we have now this is going to be our last community meeting before the conference um, which is just, uh, wow, I can't believe um, it's come so fast. So uh, be sure to join us for that one. Um, and then uh, as always, um, for updates on any of these processes, um, you know, anything that's going on, just be sure that you're subscribed to our um, social media um, and as well as our um, mailing list, which I'm sure uh, we have a link to available somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're going to be uh, sort of ramping up on our announcements as we enter sort of the six week to a month period before the conference. So um, yeah, we can't wait to welcome you. Can't believe it's coming up so quickly and hope everyone has a, uh, a wonderful um, start to your semester. <laughs>